In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate ChatGPT with NeoVim in a way that is even more powerful than Copilot and removes the need to leave NeoVim to ask ChatGPT a question. First, you are going to need a ChatGPT API key from OpenAI. If you don't already have an OpenAI account, create an account first, then click the link in the show notes to get to the API key page. Click Create New Secret Key and give your key a name that indicates where it will be used. I called mine NeoVim. Click the button to copy your new API key and put it somewhere safe for now. We'll need this later. Next, we are going to install a NeoVim plugin called chatgpt.nvim. See the show notes for a link. To install the plugin, scroll to the installation section and copy the snippet for whichever plugin manager you use. Paste this into your plugins.lua file. Your file name and location may be different than mine. Save the file to install your plugin. We also need to configure the plugin, so let's create a new configuration file in our plugins directory. Be sure to reference the new file in your init.lua. Copy the setup and default configuration from the plugin's GitHub page and paste it into your configuration file. If you just want to use the defaults, then you only need the API key command setting, but I like to copy the entire config so that I can easily change values later. The most important setting is the API key command, which you will set to a shell command that retrieves your API key. I'm using libsecret to store my passwords and keys, so I'll be installing secret tool, which is a command line interface to the libsecret library. There are instructions on the chatgpt.nvim page for using other secret managers. First, I'll install secret tool with the following command. Next, I will use the store command to store the API key we created earlier into libsecret. This command needs a label, followed by an attribute value pair that the secret will be associated with. You will then be prompted for the password, which is just your API key. To test if the key is stored correctly, run the lookup command with the same attribute value pair. When you have that working, copy the full lookup command and paste it in the API key command setting of our configuration. Let's restart NeoVim and try out the ChatGPT command. Shoot, it appears I don't have any credits in my account. If you are starting a brand new account, you may already have some complimentary credits, but my account was a bit older. So I'll head back to the OpenAI page and click the Billing tab. Click the Add Payment Method button and fill in the appropriate details. Next, you can set how much you will fund the account with credits and if you want it to automatically recur. I'm just trying things out, so I'm going to set it to the minimum amount and not enable recurring payments. Let's try the chat GPT command again in NeoVim. Hmm, looks like it still isn't recognizing our credits. Let me try restarting NeoVim again. Hey, look at that. We are able to use the chat prompt just like chat GPT in our browser. This means we never have to leave NeoVim to ask ChatGPT a question again. Awesome! Okay, now we are going to step it up a notch and edit some code. First, let's use visual line mode, Shift V, to highlight a block of code, then run the ChatGPT edit with instructions command. On the left side, you will see the code you just highlighted. The existing code reads account information from the database. I'm going to try to get ChatGPT to update the code to read a new database column. A few seconds later, and look at that! To accept the updated code, press Ctrl-Y. It worked, but now it is complaining because the corresponding class doesn't have that parameter. This is easy enough to fix by hand, but let's give ChatGPT a crack at it. It has no problem updating this class, and if we go back to the original buffer, you can see the error is no longer there. Next, let's try the chat GPT complete code command. I'll start out by typing out a comment of what I want the function to do. This should provide some context for chat GPT to complete the code. Hmm, I'm getting an error that the 4K token limit has been exceeded. This command seems to want to send the entire buffer to chat GPT and my files are rather large, so this could be quite costly. I'll try it in a separate file just to test it out. It seems to work, but in my opinion, it's a bit clunky. Fortunately, there is a much better option. 
The chat GPT run command takes a parameter indicating the action you want to run. There is a good set of options built in, but you can extend these with your own options as well. Let's try the complete code example again, but this time using the chat GPT run command. First, we highlight the lines we want to use for context. Then we type the command chat GPT run space complete underscore code. That's much better. While the code that gets generated is not always perfect, this workflow was much nicer than the chat GPT complete code command, and it only sends the selected text as context. Let's try a few other chat GPT run actions. The fix bugs action will analyze the selected code and attempt to fix any bugs that it finds. In this case, there weren't really any obvious bugs, but it did notice that the code didn't handle exceptions, so it added an appropriate try-catch block. Pretty neat. To accept the updated code, press Ctrl Y. The next chat GPT run action I want to show is the explain code action. This will analyze the selected code and provide a detailed explanation of what the code does. This is handy when you are reading a coworker's code or even your own code from a year ago. It looks like it did a pretty good job. Next up is the doc string action. This action will automatically generate a documentation block for the selected function. Not only does it provide a reasonable explanation for what the function does, but it also has the appropriate arguments and return types. If you have trouble coming up with professional sounding messages, the grammar correction action will help. It does a pretty good job with this poorly worded error message, but I still wanted something a little more professional, so I used the edit with instructions command we saw earlier to polish it up. Next, let's look at the add tests action. This action will automatically create unit tests for the selected function. The generated unit tests look decent enough, but there were references to a constructor that didn't exist, so I decided to use our old friend, the edit with instructions command. That looks much better. The last command that we are going to look at today is the chat GPT act as command. This powerful command tells chat GPT to act like a specific persona in order to better answer your question. For instance, we can tell it to act as a SQL terminal. Now we provided a SQL query and it will respond appropriately. Feel free to explore the different personas to see what is useful for your workflow. For this video, I use the default GPT 3.5 turbo model, but you can also use another model such as GPT-4 by changing your configuration. We've used this plugin quite a bit today, so before you go, let's see how much we've spent. Only four cents. That's not bad. Make sure to subscribe to see more great NeoVim videos like this in the future.